Hello, hello, hello. God bless you all. My name is I'm Unique, and I am here to share a quick message that got shared with me the other day about uh, the benefit, one of the, some of the benefits of being single. Um, some of us, God has told that we will be married in the kingdom of God. This is for kingdom people, God's children, if you are a Christian and follower of Christ. Um, and God has assigned you to a marriage, a husband or a wife. Uh, in the season of singleness, it can be very challenging because, you know, when you have that desire for to be married, it's in the, a desire that God puts there. So it can be a strong desire. Um, and you can see, we can begin to see other people get married or, you know, other people having families or things that God has promised us. And it can become discouraging or it can become like, oh my gosh, like, you know, it's it seems like it's taking forever. But God was just impressing on my heart that there are benefits to being single. Uh, it's a blessing to be single. Uh, even the Bible talks about how when you're single, you can do, you can devote yourself more to the Lord and you don't have to worry about how to please your spouse or please or whatever. Uh, but God was just, you know, showing me that when you're single, you are not obligated to anyone or anything. You don't owe your devotion to anyone or anything except for the Lord or what he has and or what he has assigned you to. All you are devoted to is the Lord and what he has assigned you to. You, you don't have to stay in any relationship. You don't have to stay in any job or anything. You don't have to, you're not obligated to anything except for the Lord and what he has assigned you to. So even if it's something that God has not assigned you to, you're not obligated to that. And sometimes we get in friendships even. This is the main thing he was showing me. When you're in a friendship or even if you have dated somebody um, or are dating someone, you're in a friendship and that relationship starts to become a strain on your on you. It starts to pull you away from God. It, you know, it, it, you're unequally yoked with this person or whatever. You don't have to stay friends with that person. You're not obligated to that person because you're single. Whereas if you're married to somebody and you're unequally yoked with them, you still have to stay married to them by law because it's a covenant unless uh, they're, uh, you know, I'm not an expert, but I know like one of the reasons you can get divorced is if someone commits adultery, but even with that, it can be sketchy. So it just depends, right? Uh, I'm not, it's not my lane, but there are benefits to being single. There is freedom in being single. There was a woman of God who told me when I was talking to her about her life, and she has a family, a beautiful woman, and she was just like, enjoy your singleness. You don't have to act like you are miserable. Well, she didn't say this part, but she said to enjoy my singleness. And, you know, I was just thinking like, you know, you don't have to be miserable. You don't have to walk around like you're alone and, oh my gosh, woe is me. I don't have anybody. There's, you know, there are people who would love to be, to be single and not have any, a husband or wife or children or our priorities. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not speaking against marriage or against families. I think it's beautiful and it's very necessary uh, in the kingdom of God because family is the building block of, of the community. And the community are the building blocks of, of regions and, and states and countries and so on and so forth. So marriage is good. Families are good. But when it's not your season to be married, um, but you know God has called you to, don't be discouraged. Don't be envious. Don't count yourself as less than because you are single. Uh, there's a scripture that has really kept me in this season. And it says that God has set apart him that is holy for himself. And so God has set us apart. If you are still single, God is setting you apart. He still wants you and loves, like wants you to himself. He is jealous. He's like, oh my gosh, like people really don't know. Um, you know, the scripture says that God is a jealous God. When you are, when you belong to him, he not possessive, but he is jealous. Like he wants you. He makes his desire for you known. You'll start to feel when he wants to spend time with you or he doesn't want you to go somewhere or do something because he's jealous of you. He's jealous for you. He loves us so, so much. He doesn't want anything or anyone to be before him. Even when you do get married, I've been um, under the leadership of a married couple and they talk about how, you know, you, Christ has to come before your spouse and your children too. He can't.
can't you can't put anyone or anything before him so even if you think that maybe marriage will fill a void in you that's not the case either only god can truly satisfy and fill you up marriage is a blessing once again children are a blessing once again but stick cling to the lord the bible says in uh, the book of isaiah how god is our husband he says your maker is your husband so if you're a woman you know woman of god your maker is your husband god is the one who provides for you god is the one who covers you god is the one who protects you he may not do it in a way that a human husband will but in his own way he protects you he gives you wisdom he teaches you he guides you he should be the head of your household if you are not married and fellas men of god you know god should be your spouse you should be married to Christ. I tell that to my some. I told that to my students that I'm married to Christ right now, and they just flip out about it. It's so funny, but um, that's the reality of, of how we should be when we're single. And when you're married to Christ, that is a blessing. Um, and it's nothing to be taken lightly. There are so many people in this world, and I forget this sometimes, but there are people in this world who have never and will never know what it's like to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you do, and God, you have been cultivating your relationship with him, and you're maybe waiting on marriage, you know, know that you are blessed, and you are one in a million, like, you know, not every many are called few are chosen you know what i'm saying some people know of him but to have that intimacy with him is very it's, it's rare it's available to everyone but not everyone's gonna take advantage so if you are in relationship with with christ count yourself blessed you are blessed beyond what you can imagine god will give you oh gosh he will give you things he will open doors he will close doors he will give you visions he will give you knowledge he will give you revelation he will give you ideas that cannot come from this world things that are out of this world there's a pastor um or a pastor in my church he, he talks about how when god does something it is wondrous like sometimes we try to do things and say that God did this or God blessed this and all this. But in reality, it's just it's something we've done in our own strength or our own ability. But he said, when God does it, it's wondrous. When God does it, it's wondrous. It's something that like, like, okay, I know this had to be God you see things certain things that happen in certain people's lives and you can tell the difference between something they did and they're just like god blessed me with this versus something god did like when you see a a stripper or somebody turn into a preacher in a year that's something that that god can do that's something only god can do when you see somebody who's on the streets and addicted to all kind of drugs and they turn around and now they're winning souls for christ that is something that God can do. But there's some stuff that, you know, people say God does that it's really just them kind of doing and putting God's name on it. But not the list, um, not list, but not the list. Uh, yeah, you're blessed. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed coming in and blessed going out. Don't base your level of being blessed on whether or not you're married. Yes, it is an honorable thing. I'm not speaking against it. I'm just saying that if you're single, it's for a reason. Maybe God is pruning and purging and cleansing you to prepare you for marriage. Maybe God is trying your heart, building your character, building things in you, building your faith, renewing your mind, healing you from past things healing you from previous relationships showing you what marriage is about and what role you're gonna like don't discount this season of preparation 
and don't make it an idol don't make marriage an idol don't make marriage an idol because when you get it most things that we make an idol once you get it it's really not all that's cracked up to be or it's really like it doesn't give you that satisfaction that you thought it would give you i'm not gonna say it's not what it's cracked up to be but there was a position that I wanted so bad and I ended up getting it. And when I got it, I'm like, yay, I was celebrating for like, you know, the first few couple months or whatever. But after a while it got it was just like, okay, this is routine, this is normal. You know. It, it's not really what I thought. It's not what I thought it would be. It's just like Oh wow, another day. I'm not saying I lost the passion for it, but it's just like I don't know. You can put things on a pe pedestal, or even people on a pedestal, and when you actually interact with them or get the thing you want, it's like oh, that's really that's all it was. But anyway, I just want to drop this word to encourage uh, my brothers and sisters who are in their season the season of singleness, but maybe God has promised you marriage, or maybe you. He has given you a desire for marriage. Um, you know, stay grounded in Him. Stay rooted in, in, in Christ. Don't idol it. Don't make an idol of marriage. You know, don't put anything before the Lord. You know, don't discredit your season of singleness. To use it to your advantage. Prepare. Work on yourself. Allow the Lord to work on you. Build yourself up. Edify yourself. Read. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep your spirit connected to God. Keep leveling up. You don't have to wait for a husband or a wife to, to become the better version of yourself. Do it regardless so that when you do marry, it'll be that much better, that much more blessed. Now, of course, there's only, you know, we can go, when you do get married, there's, you know, another level that you can go to for obvious, for different reasons, but that's another subject. So just like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Be blessed, you guys. Thank you for listening. I hope this helps somebody and encourages you, my single brothers and sisters. Um, once again, my name is I'm Unique Devon. I am an artist. I am a writer, vocalist, poet. Um, I have some some stuff out. I have a poetry book out. It's called No Concealer, Who Told You You Were Naked. Beautiful poetry book that God blessed me with in my singleness. Um, and I have some music out as well that is available on all streaming platforms. I have three singles out right now. And um, you can get to them at the link in the description of this video. Um, God bless you all. Take care. Until next time.